So you'd want to send some of your users an email. In this video, I'm going to show you how to trigger an email from your email client through a webhook. We'll also dive into a different type of trigger, triggering that email notification from a new row inside of a Google Sheet. But also, what do you do if you want to send an email to a bunch of different users? If you wait around and watch to the end of the video, I'll show you how to send an email to a bunch of different emails all at the same time. Let's get started. We are going to be using Zapier to send these email notifications. So you will be required to have a Zapier account to follow along with this demo. Once you have that created, the next thing you'll want to decide is where you're actually going to be sending these email notifications from. So Zapier has a ton of different ways to send these emails through different systems. I'm personally in this demo going to be using Gmail as that is the email client that I use. Once you've decided where you're going to be sending those emails from, you need to actually create a Zap. And a Zap is the actual mechanism that's going to be sending out these email notifications. Now, all Zaps come with two things. The first thing is a trigger. This is what starts the Zap. And then there's the action. The action is going to be sending the email notification. The trigger is telling Zapier when to send and what to send in this email notification. Now, the simplest way to connect to most no-code or low-code applications is to use a webhook. So a webhook is basically a, a pretty rudimentary API request. So let's go ahead and set this up first, and then I'll show you in a little bit how to trigger something from something like a Google Sheet. So we're going to trigger an event and the event is going to be a catch hook event. And Zapier is going to give us a URL to send this request to. So let's go ahead and copy this. And I'm just going to paste this in my browser and give this a two parameter. We're going to say, send this to Darren at amblemind.com. And I'm going to give it a message equal to hello. All right, so this gives me a success back. So we can go back to Zapier and now we can continue and test this. And we can see right there, it's already picked off what we just typed in. So I want an email to be sent to Darren at amblemind.com with a message of hello. So now our trigger is all set up. So now once that trigger is triggered, we can send an email. So again, I'm gonna be using Gmail as the action and I'm gonna be sending an email. So send email through Gmail continue. And so now it's going to ask me to select the account I want to send an email from. I'm going to send it from this email address, continue. And then here we need to set up where the email is going to go. So two is going to come from step one. And that's the email that came through the webhook. And then the message is going to be the body here. And that's going to be the message that we passed through. And it looks like there are a few more required fields. So the subject would be like notification from the app and you could put your app name there and that is all of the required fields let's go ahead and continue and we can test this and so now i should expect to see in my email inbox an email come through all right there we go notification from the app and it says hello so let's go ahead and mark that as complete and then we can turn this zap on so now how do you actually integrate this with your application the first thing we need to grab is that URL. So this is the webhook URL. Let's copy that. And I've actually set up a demo application here inside of Glide that has this kind of send to and then the message and then the send email. So let's go ahead and make this button trigger that webhook. If we click on the button action inside of Glide, I'm going to create a new action and we'll just call this send email. So whenever someone presses this button, I want to trigger a webhook. And I need to actually add the webhook URL. So I'll do that here. So we'll just say Gmail, paste that URL that we got from Zapier in there. So then we need to add in the to and the uh, message field. So message is already put in there. So let's do to as well. And I'm gonna make these lowercase because I think I did that before. So message and to, send to. So now we're passing in the send to and the message. Once that button is pressed, that webhook is sent, then we can clear out the form on the screen. So let's do that. So we'll just do clear value, clear value. And then once all that is complete, let's show a notification of success and just say email queued, send email. Now, depending on your plan, I'm on the starter plan, Zapier will pick up those requests at different intervals. On the starter plan, it runs these apps every 15 minutes. If you move up to the professional or higher plan, you can move up to run these tasks every two or one minute. So to test out our connection, let's go ahead and submit a request. So I'm going to submit an email to Darren at DarrenAlderman.com and say hello from Glide. And we'll send that email. 
So now it says email queued. And so now we can either watch the email inbox to see if an email comes through, or we can go to our zap history, go to zap runs. We can see here there was an error on this zap. Let's go ahead and check that out. So it looks like the webhook came through correctly, but if we go to step two, it looks like it's having trouble finding this parameter. Now I expected this would happen, but I wanted to show you how to fix it. So let's go ahead and find that zap, go back to that zap, and let's open up the webhook to see what's going on. We'll go to the test trigger. And so the first request was that one I typed into the URL, but let's actually load another request in here, request B. You can see here, there are a lot more parameters because Glide sent over a lot more parameters in the request. And you can see that instead of the email being under the just the two property, it's actually under params to then value. So the path to the email is different as well as the message. So that's why this aired out. All we needed to do to fix this is continue, go to the email, set up action, and here redefine the to address to be the email, and then same thing for the body. We'll do a the message value here. With the message coming through and the email coming through correctly now, let's continue and we'll test and continue. All right, so now we should see that email come through here. We can see this came from Darren at amblemind.com with the message of hello from Glide. All right, once it's saved, let's be sure to turn the zap back on so that when we submit a request, it actually gets ran. Let's go ahead and do another test for darrenalderman.com and testing again, send email. All right, email queued. And so now we should see an email come through here. Boom, there we go. Testing again was completed. Now, if webhooks absolutely scare you, there is another way to do this and we can maybe trigger from somewhere else. Let's go ahead and do a demo of that. If we come back to Glide, let's add a, another button here and this one instead of send email let's say send email via sheets so google sheets so for this one we're going to create a new action and whenever we click this button instead of triggering a webhook let's add a row to this other table that's actually a google sheet table and then in send to let's add message message and we'll say queued at the current time so same thing as previously let's go ahead and clear out the form after this is completed and then once that's done, let's send a notification again to the user interface and say email queued. And we'll say send email via sheets. All right, so let's go ahead and test this again. So we'll say, I type in the email here and then our message, this comes from sheets. And we'll say send email via sheets, email queued. And now if I go over to my actual Google sheet here, we can see that this just came through. Let's go ahead and set this use case up in Zapier. Let's name this email via webhook. And then let's just duplicate this, go into this, and we'll rename this email via Google Sheets. All right, so same thing here, but we're gonna actually change the trigger. So let's change this trigger to a different app. And the app is gonna be Google Sheets. The trigger event is going to be a new spreadsheet row right here. Let me select my account. The spreadsheet I want to change is called email notification demo. The worksheet is emails. And this is where I'm going to be sending the email, triggering the emails from. So let's test this trigger. And so here you can see, this is the one we just added. It just came through. Let's continue. And now in send email, similar to how we did before, we just want to change where that data is coming from, the actual path it's being pulled from. The email that we're sending to is this one. And then same subject notification from the app. And then the body is going to be the message and then test and continue and turn on this app. Now, when you come over to my other email inbox, we can see there's a new message here. This comes from sheets. Now, one more thing you might want to do is send an email to a bunch of different users in your app. So let's go ahead and copy the last one we created using Google sheets tr to trigger this. We'll go into that one and we'll call this one mass email through Google Sheets. The trigger is gonna stay the same, but we need to go ahead and refresh the data that we're pulling from that. So we're gonna grab that same thing and continue. And then in send email, we'll keep all of that the same, but instead of putting send to in the to field, let's actually put that in BCC field. The purpose of doing it this way is so that other people cannot see that 
other people got the message. You're sending it out to everyone in your community. So instead of putting it in the two field, we had, I wanted to make sure I removed that. We just want it in the BCC field. So let's continue. We'll turn that on and let's go back to our list of zaps and make sure we turn off the other one that's triggering from Google Sheets so that we're not sending out the email twice. And now we can test this again. So I'm going to type in two emails and a message. We'll just say sent to two. And I'm going to send this one through Google Sheets, email queued. And now we just need to wait for that email to come through. All right, there we go. Now we can click into this email and we can see that it was BCC to me. And I can't see who else it was sent to. But if I go over to the other email inbox, we can see that this one was sent to both the darrenalderman.com BCC email and then also to ambleminds.com. So if you have a ton of people that you want to send it to, I would recommend just putting it on the BCC column. That way, it's just like a regular email notification to everybody. It's a really simple, quick and dirty way of doing it. So that, my friends, is how you can send email notifications with Zapier. All it takes is a trigger, whether that's from a webhook or a new row or some other trigger from your application. And then we need an action to actually send the email from your email client of choice. Thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe. And also, if you liked this video, have you considered text notifications? What if you could give both options to the users of your app or software? Well, in this tutorial right here, I'll show you exactly how to set up text notifications using Twilio. So I think you should go ahead and check that one out and consider upgrading your product to use text notifications. Cheers and happy coding.